Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining me for today's edition of Arkansas Live. All this week, we've been teaching about the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth. And yesterday, I gave you just a brief contrast between the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, and artificial intelligence. So you don't, don't think that we're, you know, again, everything that's new and don't won't change. You know, generation to generation, people say, oh, well, the older generation, uh, they don't want anything new. They just want to stick to the old. Well, wait a minute. What about if, there, <laughs> if there's deception, if there's error in the new? You still want it if it's going to kill you, if it's going to destroy you. Keep in mind now, artificial intelligence is not real. It's deceptive in the fact that it is not uh, real. It's a substitute. And intelligence is, uh, you know, the ability to learn, to reason, to comprehend, and to apply knowledge. Well, we read yesterday in Proverbs chapter 1, that's exactly what the Proverbs, the Scriptures give you. And I've already given you examples uh, and I'm going to uh, do more of that today and tomorrow as we talk about the gifts of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the rule. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of truth. Okay, get ready. Stay tuned. Arkansas Live starts right now. As I was discussing some of the things with you that I read yesterday about, you know, about 2050, the middle of this new century, uh, and uh, those that are of the one world order, one world government, uh, actually they're talking about the Great Tribulation period where the Antichrist, the false prophet, the beast system are in control. Now think about this. After the rapture of the church, after the catching away of the church, after the Bible, uh, Jesus says, come up here after the church is caught away and we're removed from the earth. Then and only then can the Antichrist come in and set up his ungodly trinity, ungodly uh, government. But why would people listen to him? Because, now remember, all the Christians are gone. All the born again Christians are gone. Uh, because, it, you know, the world will be in chaos if those things that I read you yesterday take place, 50% of, the, um, the, of humanity is um, in arrears. In, uh, one third of the earth has lost its uh, workers and it's been replaced by artificial intelligence. And we see all of these things come to pass. The world, the banking system, the economy, the morals, everything is going to be in the toilet, so to speak. So who better to come on the scene at that time than the Antichrist, the man of sin? And he is going to come and promise solutions to every problem. He is going to be a man of peace that is going to come and calm your anxiety so everybody's going to want to follow him besides that <laughs> if you don't if you don't take the mark of the beast in your right hand or your forehead you can't buy and sell anyway so you won't be able to you know artificial intelligence will have taken over the world this is not sci-fi this is not fear this is just the way it's going to be and now you see a face on this artificial intelligence one third of the uh, workforce. Let's see, what did I have here in my notes? Uh, there's more than 50 50 chance that AI will wipe out all humanity by the middle of the century, by 2050. And it says that uh, it's possible uh, that uh, the desire will be to get the Earth's population down to 500 million a sustainable uh, amount of people. Um, a one-third of a billion layoffs. That's all, that's all potentially the um, tribulation period. And the man of sin, the Antichrist, he's going to stand up and he's going to open his arms and millions will follow him and flow 
into his deception. That's why Jesus said in Matthew 24, take heed that no man deceive you. Many will come in my name saying I'm the Christ. Don't believe it. Uh, you know, if, <laughs> if you miss the rapture, if you're not a born again Christian, and when you hear the trump, or you won't hear the trump of God, and you won't go up and meet Jesus in the clouds. <laughs> Listen, I know it's hard. To talk about it now. Don't take the mark of the beast, or you'll be unredeemable. Just go ahead and be martyred. <laughs> I know that sounds horrible, but that's what it's going to take for you to escape uh, all of that. Now, some people will make it through. Uh, there will be some Jews that will be hid, and people believe that it's uh, going to be in the, uh, uh, the in the desert. And uh, there will be people that will make it through, and some will be saved, and but the majority of them will be uh, killed. The one world government. Every time you hear that one world government, every time you hear uh, you know those terms AI, then then you need to be aware of what's real and what's not real. Now, I gave you some examples not too uh, long ago. Let me go ahead and uh, give you those examples again. Proverbs chapter 1 talks about the real true intelligence, uh, learning, knowledge, wisdom. Proverbs 1, we read it yesterday. And I, I, I gave you examples of Jeannie one time when she couldn't find her car keys. And she was praying and asking God, show me where my car keys are. You know, the Bible says that we have ministering spirits, angels, that are assigned to us. Uh, they're assigned to us to help us. And she was praying and asking God, okay, where are my car keys? I need my car keys. I need to go, blah, blah, blah. And she couldn't find them. So she started praying. And she would prayed in English, and then she would stop and say, where are my keys? So she started praying in tongues, praying in the Holy Ghost. And after she would finish praying in the Spirit, in tongues, in that Holy Ghost language, she stopped and she would say again, where are my car keys? Three times she prayed in the Spirit, in the Holy Spirit, Spirit of truth. Jesus said he'll show you things to come. He'll bring to your remembrance everything I've said. And she was getting ready for the third time after praying in the Spirit to say, where are my car keys? But what came out of her mouth was there in your robe pocket. It so shocked her, she almost laughed. She ran into her closet, uh, put her hand in her robe pocket, and there were her keys. Nobody knew that. Artificial intelligence wouldn't have known that. But the Holy Spirit did. The angels did. I met the man, uh, I met one man that was responsible for launching uh, one of uh, America's first satellite uh, stations into orbit. He's a born-again, spirit-filled Christian, and he shared with a group of ministers how he had been part of the team that was to launch that uh, first satellite, and they were tormented. He said, I would go home every night exhausted. My brain couldn't handle anymore. <laughs> and he said, I would go home exhausted. My wife would, you know, meet me at the door and, and console me and fix my dinner, and I'd go to bed. And he said, uh, we decided, he and his wife, that we would pray in the Spirit. Now, Jude said, pray in the Holy Ghost. Uh, he said, we decided that we would pray in the Spirit. He was a Spirit-filled Christian. And he said, me and my wife would pray every night. We would pray in the Spirit for God to give me the answer, the equation, the solution to how to launch this satellite. And he said, I prayed for days and weeks. And he said, and one day, all of a sudden, it popped into my head, went from his spirit to his brain. He said, I know what to do. He went to work that morning, told his team. They all agreed. They did it, and the first satellite was launched. It wasn't artificial intelligence. It wasn't computer science. It was the Holy Ghost that told him what to do. Now, he had to know how to make it happen and what to do, but the Holy Spirit is the one that showed him. 
Do you think the Holy Spirit knows about computer science? Of course he does. Do you think that he understands uh, uh, algorithms? And all? Of course he does. He's the Spirit of God. So these things come from the person of the Holy Spirit. We were in Lake Charles, Louisiana many years ago as we traveled the, the, the country, uh, the three of us, our family, my wife and son and I, and we were ministering in a church down in Lake Charles. We did not know until we got there that the pastor that had invited us to come preach in his church had gone on vacation and he was staying in a, uh, a house, a vacation house that belonged to one of his church members on Lake Charles for vacation. And they told us to go down there. We were staying with them. Well, in those days, they didn't put you in a hotel. They put you with the pastor or the deacons or whatever. So here we are. We're a family of three. And he had a family of three. There were two bedrooms and one bathroom. And we were going to be there for three or four days. So we go in there, get acquainted. And he said, y'all take this bedroom. Now, we, we have a son. They had two or three kids. So there was about six or seven of us in that house, one bathroom and two bedrooms. It was not fun. It was not comfortable. Nevertheless, we made it through. Sunday morning came time to go to church and for us to minister. The pastor and his family went on ahead of us and left us there. We had to load our van, put in our uh, instruments, our guitar, our son's Ronnie's drums, uh, all of our records, etc. So we got loaded up. Now, the pastor's already gone. Nobody there but us on, on a, in a vacation house on Lake Charles. And I went out there and started up the van. Now, this was a 72 Dodge van, stick shift. I got out there and I pushed the clutch to the floor and to put it in gear, and the clutch went to the floor and stayed there. <laughs> I knew something was wrong. So... Uh, I got underneath the van. Of course, in those days, I carried a toolbox with me, and I saw what had happened. The clutch rod broke, and I, I have I mean, a clutch rod on that Dodge van was about the size of this pen, and it, it was about this diameter and about this length, and it had two 90-degree turns on each end, and it had a spring that attached it to the clutch rod, and that's what had broken. Uh, the, the spring had broken, and I, in the clutch, I couldn't engage the gears. We couldn't go anywhere. We're stuck. So I got underneath there, and I was t uh, tinkering with it, and all of a sudden, Jeannie comes up to me, and she says, Honey, we need to pray. I said, I don't want to pray. <laughs> I was exasperated. I don't want to pray. I wanted to shove that van off into Lake Charles. I didn't want to pray. But I knew she was right. She said, We need to pray. I said, okay, let's pray. Well, I'd already changed clothes, get on the ground. I had to go back into the house. And we stood there in a circle, and we started praying. We prayed in the Spirit. We prayed in English. We asked the Holy Spirit to help us, angels of God to help us. While we're praying, all of a sudden, I have a word of knowledge. It was like something I was watching uh, on TV and I saw, now this model van, 72 Dodge van, this model van, when you raise the hood, there was a little rod that held the hood up. It was had a little turn on the end of it, <laughs> and it stuck in a hole. And when you raise the hood, you raise that rod, and it had a spring, and you stuck it in a hole in the top of the hood, and then the hood came down and it held the hood open because the hood was only, oh, probably not even a foot wide. It wasn't wide enough to get in there and do anything, but that's the way it was made. And I saw this rod that was holding up the hood and the Lord spoke to me and said, take that rod out that holds up the hood and put it in there as your clutch rod. Well, I didn't know what that meant but the Holy Spirit did so I went and changed clothes I got back underneath the, the van took that rod out got down there in that clutch rod and that rod that held up the hood were the same length 
the same diameter, had 90 degree turns on each end, and I took that rod out of the hood and the spring that held it up, and I did a little adjustment, I put that thing back together, adjusted the clutch rod, got in, pushed the clutch in, it went in, I put it in gear, and off we went. You say, miracle. No, it was the wisdom of God. It was, <laughs> it was the word of knowledge. You can't get that through AI. You can't get that through anything but the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth. So we did our ministry, and we left that <clears throat> night because we had another meeting in Lafayette, Louisiana uh, the next day. So I got to the Dodge dealership during the day. I went in there, and I said, I'd like to, I went to the parts department, and I said, I'd like to purchase a clutch rod for a 72 Dodge van. So the guy goes, the parts man, he goes over and he gets it and he brings it back. That'd be a dollar and a half. I paid him the money, got the clutch rod. And I said, by the way, did you know that the rod that holds up the hood on this van will work as a clutch rod? He just looked at me and said, huh? He didn't know. <laughs> I doubt if the design engineer that designed the van knew, but God knew. And he showed me. The word of knowledge was not artificial intelligence. It was pure intelligence. It was the intelligence, the wisdom, and the knowledge of God. Whew. That's real, true intelligence. Okay, let's go now over to uh, 1 Corinthians, and let's look at chapter 12 as we see... Uh, the gifts of the Spirit. Now, if, if you've never heard any teaching on this, I want you to listen very carefully. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1. Now, concerning spiritual gifts, the word gifts is added for clarity, but it really reads, now concerning spirituals, concerning spiritual things, hmm, I would not have you ignorant. God doesn't want us ignorant. They're all sources of intelligence, of wisdom, and knowledge, but all of them aren't pure, and they're not God. So I want God's wisdom, and that's the beginning of knowledge, is the fear of the Lord, the wisdom of God. He said, I would not have you ignorant. You know that there were Gentiles carried away uh, unto these dumb idols, even as you were led, Wherefore, I give unto you to understand that no man speaketh by the Spirit of God calls Jesus a curse, and that no man can say Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit determines everything, if you'll let him. Uh, he said, there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of administrations, but the same God. And there are diversities of operations, but it's the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit all. Now, it says this, the, the manifestations uh, of the Holy Ghost are given to every man. And it says further on down there, the Spirit divides the gifts severally as he wills. And over in 14, it, in 1 Corinthians 14, it tells you to covet earnestly the best gifts. The best gifts are the ones that you need at the time. You covet, you seek after them, you ask, you pray for them. And the Holy Spirit divides them severally as he wills. Now, Jeannie has very sensitive, is very sensitive to the Holy Ghost. And many times she has asked the Holy Spirit for knowledge or instruction or, or, or wisdom that she needs to do a particular thing. God gives her the wisdom, the knowledge, the intelligence. We've done the same thing. We know what to do and what not to do, when to do it, how to do it, etc. So the Holy Spirit is the true source of all intelligence. Now, explain just a little bit about this. He said uh, there are diversities of operations. Uh, there are diversities of gifts. There are differences of administrations. Just look at the ministry of Jesus. Uh, one time Jesus would pray for a man 
and he'd spit in his eyes. Another time he would spit on the ground, make clay a spittle and stick it in his eyes. He never prayed the same way twice for anybody. That's a diversity of operation. Sometimes the Holy Spirit will tell you to pray in different ways. There are certain ways in the Bible that you can see demonstrated. Prayer, the laying on of hands, anointing with oil. But sometimes there are diversities of these gifts and they are administered by the Holy Spirit in different operations, different ways. Uh, I had a minister friend one time, I still have him, but several years ago, he was praying for people in a healing line and he apparently, the Holy Spirit showed him what to do and he slept the people that he prayed for. He'd slap them across the face and they would be healed. Now, he wasn't advocating a slapping ministry, <laughs> a gifts of healing by slapping, but that was a operation of the Holy Ghost. That was a diversity of operation. I know I prayed under the big tent with R.W. Schembach on two occasions. Brother Schembach, we, we run his program now on the VTN on Friday nights at 8 o'clock. I'd encourage you to join. He's a true evangelist. And uh, I, I remember one particular time we were praying under the tent and he would have me go along with him and he'd put my hand on people and he'd pray for people and I so appreciated that instruction and that anointing. And if, if, if you had a back problem, if you had a, needed a healing in your back, he would tell you to bend over. And he would take that big hand, and he had a big hand. He was a big man, and he hit that guy right in the small of his back, and the guy fell out. <laughs> so later, after the service was over, I don't know whether we were in his trailer or a restaurant or whatever, but I said, Brother Schembach, I said, I want to know something. I said, why do you hit people like that? Because he'd hit them different ways. That was a diversity of operation, difference of, of method, whatever. I said, you know, if you hit me in the back like that, I'd fall out too. He just laughed. He said, I don't know what I'd do if God didn't heal those people. He said, that's the way I was taught to pray. And he said, because he, he, he worked under A.A. A. Allen in the 40s and 50s healing evangelist. A.A. A. Allen was rough. He would, he would pull people off of stretchers. He would, he would pull people out of coffins. They would bring people from the mortuary, from different places. He was rough, but people got healed. Now, they were operating under a gift. You understand? A gift is something you have no control over. A gift is a gift. It's something that God gives you at the time. In the 40s and 50s healing revivals, most everybody that was anybody in that circle, and they all had tents, most of them, Jack Coe or Roberts, A.A. A. Allen, and they were operating under the gifts of healing. Some of them were operating under the gift of faith. Some were operating under the gift of the working of miracles, Catherine Kuhlman. She didn't have a tent, but she had an auditorium. So I was in two of her services. This is a gift. Um, what's, what's the fellow that uh, could read your, he could read your mail. Um, anyway, they, these were gifts that the Holy Spirit had given these people to, to, uh, to heal people, to help people, to deliver people. And uh, he, Brother uh, Summerall told me, he said, you know, uh, Brother A.A. Um, a. Allen taught me to pray this way for people. So he said, my faith is in that gift that God has given me. And these are, he wouldn't pray the same way with anybody. I walk, we walked down the prayer line lots of times and he'd pray for different people different ways. If you had uh, eye problems, He'd reach up and take your glasses off, stick it on your head, and he'd stick his hand over your eyes, your, his fingers over your eyeballs. He prayed, he prayed for women like I would never pray for women. I mean, if they had female problems, he'd reach down and he'd put his hand on their belly. I wouldn't do that, but that's what he did. He prayed for people like the Holy Spirit told him to pray. That's a manifestation of the Holy Ghost. And it's given 
to every man to profit with all. Now, let's, let's take today and tomorrow and let's go through uh, these gifts. Remember, we're talking about the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth. We're contrasting the Holy Spirit and the Spirit of truth uh, to artificial intelligence. Okay, uh, let's begin with verse 8. It says, For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith uh, by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing uh, by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, uh, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of those tongues. But all these work that one and the self-same Spirit, dividing to every man severally as he wills. Now, when I started in the ministry in the early 70s, uh, <clears throat> there was a movement. It was the charismatic renewal, charismatic revival, you might say, that started in the late 60s at Notre Dame, South Bend, Indiana. 60,000 Catholics got filled with the Holy Ghost and spoke in other tongues. That was the beginning of the charismatic revival. Well, I came to know the Lord during that time, in 72. And there were people that were, quote, giving out gifts. In other words, they say, if you want a gift, come up, we'll lay hands on you, and you get the gift that you desire. That's not biblical. That's not what the Scripture says. It says the Holy Spirit divides the gift severally as He wills. But nevertheless, a lot of people did go up and, and wanted hands laid on them and they wanted these gifts. Very few of them knew what they were. But now we're running out of time today. Tomorrow, I want to go through each one of these and show you in the scriptures what these gifts are because this is the ministry of the Holy Spirit and He is the Spirit of truth. And He will do and lead you like no other entity or no artificial intelligence can do so. So join me tomorrow for tomorrow's Arkansas Live. And remember, Jesus is Lord of Arkansas and where you're watching too. Send your questions, comments, and testimonies to Happy Caldwell at Post Office Box 26207, Little Rock, Arkansas 72221 or email happycaldwell at vtntv.com. Remember to follow VTN on Facebook at VTN Your Arkansas Christian Connection. And follow Happy Caldwell on Twitter at Happy underscore Caldwell. VTN is on Roku. Search VTN in the channel store and add us to your lineup. Today's episode is available to watch on demand at VTNTV.com and click Watch. You can also watch VTN via live stream at VTNTV.com. 